Hey guys, are you here? And today I want to update you guys on what I'm doing in 8.3 on my Fire Mage. That's different stats, corruptions, gearing, day-to-day -day things that I'm doing to stay up to date. In my opinion, patch 8.3 is very confusing. Does anyone agree with me? Does anyone agree with me? 8.3, there's so many things to do on a day-to-day -day basis, on a weekly basis, on a bi-weekly basis. I'm just like, what is going, what do I actually have to do here? Blizzard, this is confusing, but it inspired me to make this video so we can jump on into it and figure out exactly what we're supposed to do here. So this is my mage. The first thing first, as always, is the transmog, right? You need to look good if you wanna perform well. Same reason you wear a suit to an interview, you gotta look good, that's 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 number one, all right? So this is the Mythic TOS Golden Gear, if you were wondering. All right, now let's actually jump into the core of this video though. So the talents haven't changed in a very long time since my other mage guides, okay? So I'm not even going to really um, explain each one, but take a screenshot, there it is. These are the talents that you wanna be playing with in PvP arenas, okay? Now, I am playing Relentless and not Gladiator's Medallion because I'm a human on this guy. If you couldn't tell, I am now playing my human mage almost more than my horde mage, yeah, more than my horde mage. This human mage, I, I'm liking this guy, all right? This is the new rank one title, Notorious Gladiator Czar. Going in with Relentless as a human because you have every man for himself to get out of those stun effects anyway. So you can have the luxury of playing Relentless when you're playing human. If you're um, any other race though, you wanna play Medallion. And if you're Horde, you wanna play Orc. If you're Alliance, you wanna play human. Other decent options are Night Elf, Mechanome, and on Horde, yeah, you really just wanna be Orc. Um, Okay, so for my talents, I'm playing G Pi Flame Cannon Temptry. A little bit different um, here on the PvP talents. I haven't played more with Flame Cannon um, recently to kind of just uh, stack it up when I'm being stunned, because I'm standing still automatically when I'm stunned, or um, when I'm casting a Greater Pyroblast, or um, if I'm just standing still casting, you know, a sheep once or twice or three times, I'm just getting HP. Um, damage and range, which is all very, very, very nice there from Flame Cannon. And then Temp Shield, okay? The only time I change my talents is when I play Klepto against Resto Druids, and I usually drop Flame Cannon. If you're playing really ballsy, you can drop Temp Shield instead and play Klepto against the Resto Druids, um, or uh, Resto Shamans if you want to train them and spell steal Ghost Wolf with Kleptomania, but I generally drop Flame Cannon um, and I keep the Temp just in case but if you know you're not gonna die, you could drop Temp Shield as well. Okay, so here's my gear. We're 470, Ugh. Not a big deal, not a big deal or anything. 470 item level, yup. Here's the mage. Um, so the main stats that you wanna go for on the mage, guys, are haste and versatility. Haste and versatility, all right? Those are the main two things that we're looking for. I thought my haste was 28. I guess it's only 27. Come on, Sar. What's going on there? Um, no, actually, that's weird. Anyway, haste and verse are the two main stats that you want for Fire Mage. When you're around 25% haste, um, if you want, you can go up to 26, 27, or 28. When you're around 28% haste, you can DB Sheep a Relentless target, which is nice, but not necessary, okay? So I like to play around 25, 26, 27% haste. And then all versatility from there. Okay, crit and mastery don't matter that much at all. Like really, like they just, crit almost does nothing, right? Cause you have 100% crit with combust anyway when you're bursting and your fire blast is 100% crit anyway. Like it's, it's, it's barely helping you. So minimize crit as much as you can really. And then mastery um, is pretty good actually, but versatility does just as much damage as mastery with the added defensive benefit from versatility. Um, to decrease damage taken. So versatility is just a better mastery, so you just want verse instead of mastery. But the stat priority goes haste, verse, mastery, and then crit. Um, like I said, 25%-ish haste, and then versatility from there. These are great stats. Like this this mage is looking good, man. 27 haste, 19 verse is, is exactly where you wanna be at. If you can get even higher than that, kudos to you. That's insane, okay? so. Right now I'm playing with tailoring, okay? With tailoring, I can craft gloves and legs with haste verse socket. That is bis, okay? Now this is um, gonna be a little bit confusing, but try to stay with me. In the expansion, you can get Coulter on tailoring, 
um, you level it up to 175. You can look up a guide on how to do that. When you kill anything in a minor vision or just random mobs in Oldham, you're going to get two different things. The first is going to be a recipe for void focus, okay? The recipe for void focus is going to allow you to craft the good gear. To get the splinters, you kill a bunch of random things, you get them really fast in the visions. 10 void focus splinters, you can make the void focus cool. Void focus goes in the heart of the Azeroth place. Once you get the void focus, then you can craft... Uh, I believe it's these guys here, the 440 socketed random stat legs. Requires void focus. You get all the mats, you get the expulsum, you craft these. When you craft the 440 legs, you automatically get the recipe for the 440 or 455 legs in your inventory. But it requires an empowered void focus. To empower your void focus, it's a quest. You have to get 20 shreds. To get 20 shreds, you can get them from Arena. You can get them from Raided Battleground wins. You can get them from Raiding. You can get them from Heroic Raiding uh, a little bit more. You can get them from a lot of different places. But um, once you get 20 Empowered Void Focus, then, or once you get 20 of the shreds, you can get that Empowered Void Focus and craft the 455s. When you craft the 455s, same thing. You'll get the recipe for the 470s, and then you need a Dreadful Void Focus. To get the Dreadful Void Focus, guys, you need 200 shreds, which is a lot of arena wins, a lot of, you know, all the different things you can get them in. Um, the easiest is to do a Heroic Raid, because you get 10 shreds off of each boss. You make the Dreadful Void Focus, you get the legs, you can make the best in slot legs, 470, and you have to cross your fingers for the Aurora, the Haste Verse, pants and legs. So it's the same exact process for the gloves. Um, also, I'm engineering on this guy. Same exact process. I'm not going to explain it again. You get the you get the 445 helm, the 460 helm, and then the 475 helm. Same thing here. You can get the pretty solid 480 helm right away. Now, this helm doesn't have Blaster Master on it. I'll cover the best traits here in a second. It doesn't have Blaster Master on it, but it's... Um, so you could go with that, this helm right here with Wildfire Blaster Master instead. But it does have a really good defensive benefit from the um, auto self cauterizer right here to remove bleeds, so it's really good against ferals and assassination rogues to remove all of the bleeds. Okay, so you kind of know how to get the gear a little bit. The rest of this gear, and this is my major gripe. Okay, can I get 30 second rant? 30 second rant, all right? I'm a PvPer, and look where my gear's coming from PvE crafted, PvE Mythic Plus. Uh, crafted, Mythic 15, World Quest, Mythic 15, Heroic Raid, Mythic... Oh, there's an arena piece. There's an arena piece. Haste for Socket. That's actually an arena piece right there. Mythic, 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 PvE quest line. That's an arena piece there on the shoulders, but it's not best in slot and another crafted piece. So, I guess my, my 30 second rant is why, as a rank 1 PvPer, do I have no PvP gear on Blizzard? Can someone answer that question for me, please? But that's okay, all right, whatever, rant over. This is the gear. So anyway, I have really good gear, right? Haste verse socket, haste verse, haste verse, haste verse. Everything is haste verse. That's what you're going for, uh, except my wand. My wand is haste crit. The only reason I'm using it is because it's 475 with um, ineffable truth. Truth, truth, truth. I said truth. Um, the best corruption, so this is probably like, I should have said this at the start of the video, the best corruption is, maybe we'll start the video with that, <laughs> clickbait, um, is tier 3 infinite stars. If you can get tier 3 infinite stars, it's going to be absolutely pumping. Um, actually, I'll bring this up real quick. It's just a wowhead link of, of all the different affixes. But if, if you can get tier 3 infinite stars, it is going to do so much damage. Um, and I'm recording this video on February 19th, 2020. Wow. So that's, um, if there's patch notes in the future, nerfing it, whatever. This is when I'm recording. Um, so Infinite Stars, guys, is the best thing that you could get for Mage. Um, the second best thing, um, or maybe tied to the first best thing, would just be versatility, flat damage, um, flat versatility. So increases the amount of versatility you gain from all sources. This is just good, and I actually have this on my ring. Increases the amount of versatility you gain from all sources by 6%. Only 10 corruption there on the ring. It is so good, man. So good to actually have that um, versatility. If you wanted, you can get the flat haste as well. Like I said, the best is haste and verse. So either haste or verse flat stat is very, very, very good for mage. And then the last thing I would say that's pretty solid is twisted appendage. And this is going to spawn mind flay tentacles. So 
as a mage, you're looking for the Twisted Appendage, hopefully tier three, Infinite Stars, hopefully tier three, or the Versatility Flat Haste or Flat Verse. Those are the best ones you can get on this mage. I have the Flat Verse and an Effable Truth, so it's not very good, but hey, it's something, okay. So we got corruptions out of the way. We got stat priority out of the way. As far as gearing, okay. So best in slot gear right now is coming from from the mythic raid. So, don't rage, Zar. It's okay. Um, the best helm you could get right here, 485 wildfire blaster master visage. This thing's insane. It has the best two traits. The best two traits for mages are wildfire and blaster master. If you want, you could do three blaster masters, one wildfire, and two fire mind. Or you could just do triple wildfire, triple blaster master. That is really good too for PvP, one or the other. But that blaster master is very good. And unfortunately, on my mage, I have I have actually 475 chest, 475 shoulders, and a 480 helm. But I have no blaster masters, unfortunately, on any of them. So high high item level, but no no blaster masters. That kind of sucks. Um, the best shoulders you could either get the ones from Carapace with wildfire blaster master, or I think there's one from maybe another boss as well. The Cowl of Unspeakable Horrors works as well. So you just want Wildfire, Blaster Master. Uh, you can get the one from Ilganoth, the one from Nazoth, the one from Carapace, um, blah, blah, blah. But Wildfire, Blaster Master, or you could do that other setup I mentioned as well. Um, and then Trinkets. Trinkets are very important as well. Obsidian Claw is best in slot right now. It is insane. The reason I like it a little bit over the Rot, cr uh, rot Crusted Voodoo Doll is because it does damage instantly. So Voodoo Doll takes about two to three seconds to actually hit the target. So when you press it, it, it like travels slowly through the air. Um, but when it lands, it does a ton of damage over six seconds and an additional burst after six. So it's really good. The thing with the claw man, as soon as you hit it, it's at the target starting to tick damage. Then it does really, really, really fast damage. Um, it, it does it a little bit slower over 8.5 seconds instead of six, but it's still really, really good. Um, I would say the claw is best in slots. You want the mythic one socketed if you can. And it gives 12,000 mana back, which is not a big deal for mages, but hey, it's something. So I would go with the claw and the voodoo doll um, sometimes, or I like to just play the battle master and the voodoo doll, or the claw and the battle master rather. And then sometimes I'll go with the safeguard and the battle master. But I'd say that my, my best setup right now is probably the emblem and the claw into most things is what I like to run um, as far as my trinket usage. So that's pretty much the setup. Um, for those of you wondering what UI I have on, by the way, I did update Zar UI. It removes the artwork. It adds these um, buttons to the side. It has um, most of the functions of the older Zar UI, but new and improved on the new version. If you want my add-ons, I think they're linked down below. It's just on my website, zaru.tv slash add-ons, if you did want to download that. And now we'll get into the essences. Man, these videos in 2020 are getting pretty long because back in the day, I was just like, I would give you stat priority and that was about it, and some talents. Now we got corruptions and essences and trinkets. It's Anyway, on to the essences. We got Breath of the Dying as the major, Crucible as the minor, Lucid Dreams as the minor, and Conflict as the minor. I usually run at this setup. I wouldn't change much around here. I'm just gonna say this real quick. A lot of people, a lot of people think Lucid Dreams as the major is kind of the way to go. That's more for PvE. For PvP, it's on global cooldown, which makes your go a little bit slower, right? Think about you get a sheep on a healer and you want to get it burst out. Now you have to pre-pop Lucid Dreams. That's a whole nother global and your sheep is a second later versus just popping breath and combust and dull and a couple fire blasts and the guy's dead anyway. It's a little too slow, in my opinion. That's why I don't run it, and that's why most other rank one mages don't run Lucid Dreams Major. That's more for PvE. This is a PvP guide. Whew, got that out of the way. Same thing with the Bracers, by the way. A lot of people will think that the Bracers from uh, Mechanome are the best. Now, I'm not going to say they're bad. I would say that they're, they're a good um, option, but they're not necessary in PvP. These things are going to give you... 1.5 fire blast charges back every two minutes when you're not playing with lucid major right so lucid minor they're gonna give you about one charge back every two minutes meaning it's a little bit extra damage every two minutes but is that worth dropping uh almost 200 primary stats 
Probably not. But if you want to run at the bracers, I don't think they're a bad thing. They're a good side grade. Um, you could do a little bit more burst with your combustions with them, like a tiny bit more burst with the combustions with them, but it's not something that you absolutely need for PvP. Now in PvE, you do need them, as I understand, because um, you when you combine the bracers with Lucid Dreams, it's crazy. Anyway. In 2v2, when I'm playing Rogue Mage, I have been experimenting with just playing Crucible as the Major, and I've been playing um, Breath as the Minor, right? Crucible as the Major gives you the option to heal yourself with the Concentrated Flame instead of just dealing damage with the Concentrated Flames, meaning um, you'll be able to have a bit more sustain in a, in a game where you don't have a healer. Okay, so the Concentrated Flame... Um, when playing without a healer or in a duel situation, I could definitely vibe with. So if you're dueling a friend and you want a bit more longevity to heal yourself, run away, reset, it is really nice to be able to have that. And then um, Forge's big burst, 3v3, most PvP situations, Breath of Dying. So if you have a healer, play with the Breath. If you don't have a healer, you could play with the Crucible. It's an easy way to say it. Um, so I think that covers the corruptions, the neck, the gearing, um, the Azerite traits, the stat priority, the talents, the PvP talents. Great. We're moving on along. This is fantastic. Now it comes down to the things that you want to do every single day. So to get Breath of the Dying rank 3, you need Oldham Accord to Revered, meaning every single day until you hit Oldham Revered, and I'm not quite Oldham Revered. What am I? Reputation. Oldham. Oh my gosh! I actually didn't know I was this close. Oh man, we're definitely hitting Revered today. That's what I'm talking about. Oh man, I'm excited now. How did I get that? I don't even know how I got that close. Sick. Oldham um, Accord. When I get that to Revered, then I'll have the rank three and I won't have to do this anymore every day. But where, where's Oldham? Here we are. Oldham dailies. Okay, they're in Oldham. Shows them on the map. Do the Oldham dailies every day. A, that's, that's just every single day they reset, right? So do that every day until Revered, then you're good. Vision of Nazoth. The vision, this is called the minor vision, okay? Um, it's going to um, be available every day, and you want to go into the minor vision, do the daily um, every single day, so you stay up to date on your visions, and you stay up to date on your momentos. Momentos, okay? So that's daily. Daily vision, daily minor vision, and the daily world quests, okay? The daily minor vision is either going to be an Oldham, or it's going to be in Veil. It swaps every single week, okay? For me, I'm not doing the Veil um, daily quests. I don't think that's a mistake. I don't think I need them as a mage, but uh, I'm not doing my Veil daily quests. Weekly, you want to do the boss, okay? Every single day. Uh, I think this is covered by my camera, but every single day you want to do your emissaries that are important. So AP ones are important, um, which are both of mine right now. Man, I've got to kind of hop on those emissaries, guys or ones with gear can corrupt, right? So if it, like this ring, for example, I'm using it, it's from a world quest that gave me haste verse with versatility corruption. This thing's insane. I'll probably keep this for a very, very long time. It was from a world quest. So do the world quest that give you a chance at gear or a chance at Azerite if you need the Azerite um, power and the Azerite gear as well. If you don't have the best in slot, there's 445 Azerite gear that drops from world quest now. Um, so, so yeah, that's, that's every single day. Now, every week you have the major vision. Okay. The major vision, um, is in Silithus next to Magni in the heart of the, um, aspects, um, chamber. You go to your major vision and you have to go in, um, the, the best you can do is five mask, five chest. Every single week you want to be able to um, rank up your cloak with this. I'm not. This is not a cl cloak ranking guide. There's probably tons of videos that show you guys how to rank up your cloak. But you basically every week there's a quest. You rank up your cloak with the quest by doing the major visions. That's once a week. You can rank up your cloak one more level, and there is a catch-up mechanic for this. I do believe to go into the vision, you need a vessel of horrific visions, which is here, and you get the vessel with ten thousand Kalusking visions, and you get the visions from the minor visions and from dailies. Um, so that's why I do the minor visions and dailies. Hopefully that all makes sense, but you'll be leveling up your cloak through that, and you can actually get loot from the um, from the major visions as well once you start doing like uh, more masks, like four mask, five chest, or um, three mask, five chest. You'll actually get higher and higher item level loot so that you can start getting gear from those major visions as well. 
All right, we're almost done with this video, I swear. This is crazy how long this video is taken just because there's so many places to get gear. But weekly, I would also recommend doing heroic, if you can, Nihilatha. The reason I would say to do heroic Nihilatha is because, one, the trinket forbidden obsidian claw is from Mott, so you want to be able to get that. Two, heroic Nihilatha is the best way to get shreds of insanity for the crafting gear. You get 10 shreds per boss, meaning... If you just clear it two weeks in a row, you have all your shreds done. So for that reason, and then three, there is good gear from Nizoth and Carapace and Ilganoth in terms of the Azurite gear. The last thing, I guess there's two more things. One is capping arena each week. You need to go to your arena tab and then cap your arena each week to get your conquest rewards. So you get your weekly chest. And, the, and then the actual last thing is getting the mythic plus chest every single week so that you can get... Um, uh, 475 piece. You want to be able to do a plus 15, hopefully, um, every single week. So you get that 475 chest at the end of the week. And then throughout the week, you can also do um, under for the for the doll. Um, here, there's uh, for mages, you can get the weapon from Shrine of the Storms. Akmar the Tidecaller with Haste Verse. Um, and then King's Rest has a ton of Haste Verse gear. Haste Verse um, boots. Um, haste first ring and haste first dagger all very good from king's rest and then there's haste first bracers from mother load as well right here so i think that's everything you'll need to know in terms of mythic pluses you can get to grinding you want to do at least a plus 11 to 14 i believe to get the max item level loot is that is that correct to get the max item level loot um for the dungeons, you can just keep spamming plus 5, uh, 11 to 14s to get the loot. You want to do a 15 every week to get the, the ending loot. And yeah, it's pretty much it. So guys, I felt a big calling to make this video, mainly because of how long this video was. It is very confusing. There is a lot to do right now. In the past, it was super easy. We had a PvP vendor each week. You capped arena and you bought the gear you wanted, and that was it. Nowadays, it is very confusing. Major vision, minor vision, professions, shreds, void focus, um, corruptions, Azurite gear, necklace, cape, um, heroics, mythics, mythic pluses, all of this stuff. So I, I hope this video explains what you want to do as a mage right now, what you want to do every day, and then what you want to do on a weekly basis to stay caught up in the game right now to PvP. Now, I'm going to just be transparent and honest. I am very disappointed that as a PvP player, this is everything we have to do. The fact that the, there's a 22 minute video on how to PvP and I didn't really say much about Arena at all makes me sad. I hope Blizzard is watching this video. Blizzard, are you in there? I hope Blizzard is watching this video in, in, in the future and next expansions. We can try to make it so PvPers you know, we do a little bit of PvE here and there, but it's mainly focused on arena and and vendors and buying the gear we want. And then, you know, if we if we hop into a Mythic Plus every now and then or a raid to grab a cool trinket, I understand that as well. But the fact of the matter is right now, as a PvP, there is a lot of content to get done that is not PvP. But that's okay. We got it all done here on this mage. I'm working on it on my other mages and alts. And, um, and we're going to be hopping into the arenas here shortly. Guys, I hope this video helped clear things up on how you're supposed to get gear, how you're supposed to get caught up in 8.3. If you guys enjoyed the video at all, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. If you did not enjoy the video, make sure to give it a big thumbs down. Talk to me down below in the comments about future videos that you guys want to see. And don't forget to follow me over on Instagram where I do a ton of Zaryu IRL content, my workouts. Um, food. You guys can see Shannon over there when we're planning for vlogs and other cool stuff. So definitely go follow me over on the Instagram. And don't forget to subscribe. See you guys in the next video. Peace.